after spending 150 days in this world, I still have no automatic farms. So I'll build a total of 30 farms today. Yeah, there's a lot to build today. Anyways, grab some snacks, stay hydrated and enjoy these next 400 days. Before we get to that, however, last time I had promised to get three cats for our cat tree. So let's start looking for them. But first, I need some fish. Then let's head over to a village. And here's the first one, which looks very similar to my actual cat. There's another one over there as well. And finally, we have adopted our first cat into the family. And now for the other two, drive by and again. Now that I have three of them, let's bring them back to our base. And here they are. Next, I want to move these animals into something a little nicer. This is already so much better. Now they have food, water and much more space than before. Now let's start with the actual farms. The first few farms I'm going to build are the most essential ones. This means I can use these already to build the rest of the farms much easier. And the first one is a sand duper. And because the sand duper can also produce concrete powder, I'll add a concrete factory on the other side to convert the powder into solid concrete immediately. This makes it a two in one farm. So let's start collecting resources. Before I can start building, I'll have to remove the end portal frames and punch a hole in the center. And now we can start building. And that's two farms down, 28 more to go. The next farm is a wither skeleton farm. Not only do we get basically infinite beacons, but also access to all the bone meal and coal we'd ever need. Let's not waste any time and start building. This farm is so easy to build for what you get in return. Anyways, the next farm I want to tackle is the iron farm. With this, we can craft all the pistons and hoppers needed. Just don't tell anyone that I might have built these three iron farms too close to one another and the farm therefore is a bit slower. Anyways, apart from that, I can leave the long and hard days in the mines behind me. Next up is an automatic smelter. This four furnace smelter has served me well up until now. However, it's time to upgrade. This 64 furnace smelter array is gonna make smelting glass or anything so much faster. And don't worry, at the end I will also make paths to each of the farms, that way they are not just scattered around randomly. For a shulker farm we first need a better gateway, so I made some end crystals to fight the dragon again. And on the fourth gateway I found the perfect location. We fly through here and immediately have an end city. Finally, I simply need to build the farm. So the farm is built now, but now comes the fun part, transporting a shulker, yay.
I definitely have no problems with this farm at all. I mean, I totally didn't forget to remove this platform before starting the farm, causing a lot of pain to remove afterwards, or a boat breaking due to all the shulker bullets, which I then had to replace as well. Anyways, after some minor trouble, the farm is working perfectly. I really hope there's no trouble from here on out. This next farm is the last one of the essential ones and arguably the most important one as well. Yeah, it's a raid farm. But not just because you become practically invincible and stupidly rich in emeralds, but because of the gunpowder for all the rockets and redstone for any, well, redstone contraption. So let's build this farm. Now these are all the essential farms that make resource gathering for the rest of the farm so much faster. I know I haven't shown much of that aspect of playing Minecraft, but I just feel like it's often the same thing over and over again, and it's not very interesting to watch. In addition, I somehow have to cover 30 builds in this video, so naturally I need to cut out a lot of footage. I also finally organized my ender chest with color-coded chalker boxes. Anyways, enough yapping, we're already 6 minutes into the video and have only built 7 farms so far. So let's pick up the pace. The next farm is a froglet farm. We simply feed the magma cubes to the frogs and voila. Then let's build a sugarcane farm inside a giant silo. This one is especially useful for crafting rockets. All the random tick farms are going to be inside a silo, but the other ones like weed and pumpkin farms will be built later in the video. My favorite light block is the sea lantern and they're a pain to get without a guardian farm. So here's a guardian farm to fix a problem. Before I move on to the slime farm, let's get a few more beacons and then do this for the next seven years. Three hours later. Yeah, okay, it wasn't quite seven years, but oh well. Now I can build a slime farm for all the slime blocks for a world eater well that's a video for another time anyways let's build the farm This one is a mango swamp based slime farm with 9 modules for reasonable rates. Next up is a universal tree farm. I modified the original design to fit my needs better. Here I can farm all of these trees and fungi. The only ones excluded are dark oak and mangrove. Now let's hammer out some of the really small farms. Here's a basalt farm for, well, basalt. This one's a cocoa bean farm for brown dye. Here we have a snow farm using a snow golem to regenerate the snow. And a really simple wither rose farm for all the black dye. Now before I continue to build more farms, I want to capture a few mobs that only spawn today. I am talking about the Halloween mobs. Basically certain mobs spawn with carved pumpkins naturally only on the 31st of October. Now you might ask, wait, wasn't Halloween like over two months ago? Well, that's definitely true. But I recorded this video back in October slash November. So that's why these mobs spawn right now. And now I have two of each of them name tagged and trapped. These will be used in a video later down the line. Now back to building the farms. The next one is a three in one farm. Well, not really. It's just one building with three separate farms. So here we have a string duper which outperforms any wool farm, a glow lichen farm for decoration and spawn proving, and a dye farm mainly just for the blue dye from cornflowers. Then we have an extremely useful farm for crafting redstone components like pistons and droppers, a fully automatic cobblestone farm that is quite fast as well. The only dye that's left to farm is the green dye, which is only obtainable by smelting cactus. So here's that farm built as well. Because I was running low on shulker shells all the time, I decided to AFK at the shulker farm overnight and in this little box i was completely safe from any threats and this is the result the next farm to be built is a honey farm. This one's actually my own design. Well, it's simply a modular design stacked a bunch of times with some fancy redstone magic to automatically distribute empty bottles or shears and collect honey bottles or honeycomb respectively. And for some reason, I wanted to use 1000 bees. So here's a temporary farm for honeycomb to craft the beehives. Then I also need some raw gold blocks for decoration.
I then decided to build the farm already even though I didn't have all the beehives yet so I farmed the remaining honeycombs while building. And here we go. This is the farm and down here is a bee breeder. Basically there will be a bunch of bees in there and once bread the babies can fly through the gap and go into the beehives in front. So let's breed a bunch of bees. And this is where everything went downhill. After I had bred a good amount of bees already I accidentally punched a bee. Not only did I almost die but I also lost all of the bees. Well almost all of them. Luckily I was spared with two of them that had survived. So now I simply simply need to start the breeding process over again. And after all of that trouble, I finally had all the bees needed. And it was time to place them into the farm. At first, I tried to just place them as fast as I could, but that didn't quite work out. So the trick was to place something in front of the beehives temporarily until all of them were placed. Then I simply had to remove the blocks in front to release them. And at long last, the honey farm was done. This was quite literally by far the most painful one to build. Anyways, now let's finish the overworld farms, starting with the rest of the silos. So here's the bamboo farm. This one's a modified design of the sugarcane farm from earlier. Next is the melon slash pumpkin farm. This one simply has two farms in one building. And the last one is a wheat farm. The reason these silos are so tall is simply so I can expand these farms upwards if needed in the future. As for the final farm in the overworld, I need a moss farm. There's not much to this farm, so here's that build as well. As promised earlier, let's also connect all the farms with some paths to tie everything together. This area looks amazing, but we're not quite done yet. There are still three more farms to be built. First, let's build the last farm in the end. It is a skulk farm, which uses endermen to regenerate the skulk, which can be harvested with a silk touch hoe. And now I can move on to finishing the nether and therefore the entire video. The penultimate farm I want to build is a piglin bartering farm. Using 120 plus piglins, we get an insane number of items. And personally, the three most useful items we get from this farm are blackstone, quartz and one of my absolute favorite blocks to build with, trying obsidian. Now because this farm needs a lot of gold to run in the first place, we'll also need a powerful gold farm. I decided to use the fastest single player gold farm that doesn't use portal spam as this might be fixed sometime in the future. And this marks the final and 30th farm complete as well. I know I didn't go into details with each of the farms, but the reason for that is simple. There are 30 farms in one video and I didn't want to make an hour long episode, so some of the farms didn't get as much screen time. However, if you want any more information on any of the farms, they will be linked down below. From now on, making giant builds is much easier as the time getting resources is much shorter. This allows me to go to a much bigger scale in general for each video as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video just as much as the last one. Make sure to like, subscribe and remember, always wash your vegetables. I don't know why. I said that. Anyways, I hope to see you next time as well.